the order of Melchizedek. And, and I've, I'd ask them to help me load this on the platform so that you get the picture of what I'm about to teach. The order of Melchizedek. We start with Genesis. Genesis chapter 14 from verse 18. Genesis chapter 14 from verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. Verse 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20. And blessed be the most high God, which had delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Verse 22. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hands unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from, from, I will not take from a thread even to the shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. May God bless his word. The second passage we're going to read as a foundation is Hebrews chapter 7. From verse 1, it's a very long one, so please permit me to read it. Matter of fact, we start from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20, and then we'll come to Hebrews 7, 1. Uh, the people who divided the Bible into chapters, let me just admit to you, let me admit to you, that the people who divided the Bible into chapters, particularly King James, they were not born again. So they were just slashing the Bible anywhere they were. Cha -cha -cha. You know, they were behaving like Chinese people. So, <laughs> so chapter 6, verse 20, belongs in chapter 7. In fact, if you want to know what I'm saying, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, starts in a way that is not grammatical. It says, therefore, how do you start the whole statement? Therefore, seeing we're all compassed. No, 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 no. You don't start the whole chapter with, therefore. They were just slashing the Bible where they like. So chapter 6, verse 20, belongs in chapter 7. So let's start there. If you have a paper Bible, me, I don't carry paper Bible anymore. I have about 14 in my iPad. So those paper Bibles, once in a while, I go back to them and fill the paper again, but not all the time. Chapter 6, verse 20, everywhere you see, after the order of Melchizedek, please make sure you mark. We're going to read chapter 6, verse 20, to chapter 7, verse 17. Wherefore, no, whither, whither the forerunner is for entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Please mark. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Begin to see the comparison between this man and Jesus, to whom also Abraham, as great as he was, gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, Melchizedek, any Melchi, means go, a king. Zedek, Zedek, Zedak, and in Arabic, Zedak or Zedak means righteousness. So, king of righteousness, and after also, king of Salem, which means he was also the king of peace. Jesus is a prince of peace, which is a king of peace. Verse 3, without father and without mother. Without descent, having neither the beginning of days nor the end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest for how long? Continually. You will see later. The priesthood of Aaron ended, but the priesthood of Melchizedek continues, and that's why Jesus chose to line up behind Melchizedek, not behind Aaron, the one which ended. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham, who was a great man, had to bring the tent of his spoils. And verily, the, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren. Though they came out of the loins of Abraham, but he whose descent is not counted from them. In other words, the priesthood of Aaron, you had to be, it was a family thing. You had to be a priest like Aaron 
or you have to be from his family of Levite to be a Levite to be a priest. But the one of, of Melchizedek, not by family, and Jesus did not come from Levi, he came from Judah. Therefore, the new priesthood is not on the basis of family, it's on the basis of calling. You have been called into the house of God, God is about to take you somewhere. Somebody say, I'm going somewhere. And so the Bible says from, them, he, from him he received tithe, of, uh, he received tithe of Abraham and blessed him that, that had the promises. Verse 7, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Melchizedek was seen as the greater because he's a priest and a king and he blessed Abraham. Verse 8, and here are men that, that die receive the tithe, but there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. We're coming to an explanation of all these verses. And as I may say, as I may so say, Levi also who received tithe, paid tithe in Abraham. I shall illustrate that. How a boy who has not yet been born was paying tithe through his great grandfather. Praise the Lord. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what for the need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be accord after the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Verse 13, bear with me, we'll be soon finished. For he whom these things are sp spoken pertained to another tribe, of which no man giveth attendance at the altar. Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. They don't go to the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. And I read the last verse for he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Permit me to read one more passage of scripture before we expound. One day in heaven, David was invited to see heaven. And when he saw heaven, he saw Yahweh talking to Adonai. Psalm 110 verse 1 to 4. Yahweh himself Jehovah God was talking to Adonai, Jesus the Son. The Lord said unto my Lord. Can you see two Lords there? One Lord is complete total capital letters. That is Yahweh, the King of all kings, God himself. Said unto Lord, one capital and lower letters, which is Jesus. This is David having the chance to visit heaven. And God said, to Jesus, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Verse 2, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Verse 3, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Verse 4, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order. Of Melchizedek. David saw this, and there is a reason. This morning, as we teach the order of Melchizedek, what is the order of Melchizedek? Why is it important to us as believers? Why should we recognize the order of Melchizedek? First, please, firstly, it's, an, it's a priesthood ordered by the power of God. I like you to say the power of God. It's a priesthood that is backed by the power of God. The priesthood of Aaron was sanctimonious. It was functional. They burnt offering. They burnt this. They burnt that. This priesthood is also an eternal priesthood without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither the beginning of days nor the end of life. It is a priesthood that is built on righteousness. Melchizedek means the king of righteousness. You and I have been called into a priesthood. We are, we, are, we are royal priesthood. Jesus is the highest priest. Not just a high priest, but the highest priest. So is the highest priest. 
In this priesthood we have been called to, Jesus is the highest priest. Hebrews 5 verse, verse 5 and 6 says, So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. But it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. He, as, as he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The high priest is a king and a priest. In Bible times, you can either be a priest or you can be a king. You cannot be both together. In fact, I'm sure you remember there was a king who was trying to perform the function of a priest. He went and touched the altar and his hand withered because he tried to perform what he wasn't called to. A priest, the, the priest of Melchizedek with Jesus lined up behind is a priesthood of victory over sin. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. We are going somewhere this morning. This priesthood is the one that can give blessing, that can speak favor. As you can see, Melchizedek spoke into the life of Abraham. This priesthood is the one that has power over the spirit of death. The high priest of this priesthood has power over the spirit of death, can declare life, and it can stand. Thank God for Jesus Christ. This priesthood is the one that has an unchangeable commitment, unchangeable oath, and he swore unto him by a, an oath. Hebrews 7 verse 21, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So whatever Jesus is, Hebrews 13, 8, he is that thing yesterday, today, and forever. This priesthood is also the priesthood that has power to achieve spiritual perfection. That is why God is working in your life and working in my life and taking us to perfection. I'd like you to say perfection. This priesthood operates not under the law of sin, but the law of faith. That's why we move by faith. We operate by faith, Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that will come to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. This priesthood functions not based on family, but based on calling and maturity. You and I were called into Christ. And as we grow in the grace of God, the hand of God manifests in our life. Hebrews 5.10 says, called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. We've been called to life. We've been called to power. We've been called to grace. We've been called to blessing. Praise the Lord. So when Jesus came to earth, he had the opportunity to line up behind two priests. One was Aaron. But the priesthood of Aaron ended the day Jesus screamed on the cross when he said, Tetelestai, it is finished. That day, the cloth in the temple, what happened? It tore from where to where? From top to bottom. The cloth is up to six meters. So man did not tear it. God taught it to say that from now on, access is given to the presence of God. Glory to God Almighty. From that day, the priesthood of Aaron ended, but they still continued. They were still performing, not knowing that God had ended that priesthood. A new sheriff is in town. A new priest had shown up. A priest who had no limitation. He didn't come by family connection. He came by the power of God. He came by an oath sworn by God. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. I don't want to go too much into this Melchizedek man. We could spend a whole day trying to understand what kind of a person is this. Is he a human being? Is he an angel? Is he God? Who is he? Many people are speculating, but one thing we know is that he was a priest who showed up in the days of Abraham. And Abraham knew him, and he submitted to the man. And the Bible says the pattern of Melchizedek is the pattern of Jesus. And the pattern that Jesus takes is the pattern that we take. He is king and priest. We also are royal priesthood. We are kings, and we are priests unto God. Revelation chapter 1, 
Verse 6 confirms what we are saying this morning. He said, and he has made us what? Kings and priests. Somebody say, I'm a king and a priest. Say it one more time. I'm a king and a priest. He has made us kings and priests unto our God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. The king in you must function. The priest in you must function. So I pray for you, may they rise. You see, the priest in you should worship. So when we are worshiping and when we are praying, we pray as priests. We worship as priests. But there is a time when the king should decree matters. Because the Bible says kings decree a matter. The Bible says you shall bind and it shall be bound. You shall lose and it shall be loose. That is the king operating in you. Let me expand the order of Melchizedek to you so that you can fully understand the calling that is upon us. The order of Melchizedek is eternal, is the eternal royal priesthood of Christ, which was before Jesus entered this planet through a virgin. The Bible tells us that David saw him and he saw God telling him, you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So it's a priesthood that was before Jesus showed up on earth. This order of Melchizedek is the royal priesthood of the royal family of God, both in heaven and on earth. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the church wakes up to the fact that, wait a minute, we are royal priests and we serve a priest who is after the order of Melchizedek, then we know that there's no limit to our destiny. There's no limit to our power. There's no limit to our calling. There's no limit to our grace. We are not a religion. We are a kingdom. Somebody say kingdom. kingdom. Or say it one more time, kingdom. kingdom. Because until you realize that the church is a kingdom, you'll be grappling with little, little things. But once you know that it's a kingdom, then you need to know how does a kingdom function? Who is the king of that kingdom? What is the protocol of the kingdom? What is the financing of the kingdom? What is my benefit in the kingdom? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So the order of Melchizedek is the priesthood of the kingdom that governs the activities of the citizens of that kingdom. And so from today, look at me. Because you have lined up behind this king and priest, your ministry will experience the grace from that king. Your business will experience the grace from that king. And I declare your family will experience the grace from that king. If, look, look at me, look at me. If you go to the marketplace to function, even your business will experience the power of that king. The king will defend you. The king will fight for you. If you believe, shout amen. amen. The order of Melchizedek is the eternal order of a king of righteousness and peace. So every time we are expecting people who are not halerebo kata in the Rusia, anyone who is not under Melchizedek order of priesthood, and you want him as your president to bring peace, you are wasting your time. It's not possible. This grace only flows through royal priests. I am praying for the day that a child of God that truly knows who he is in the kingdom of God will occupy the seat of power in our nation. That day righteousness will reign. Peace will reign. Shout amen. So listen, it does, it's not enough that he's born again. We've had born again people in the state assemblies and yet they don't even know who they are. Because all many of our believers know is, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I'm blessed, I'm favored. But they don't really know the meaning of royal priesthood. Roy <laughs> At a point where you know your royal priesthood, there are things they are bringing to your neighborhood. And as a king, you will decree that it's not entering. And it shall not enter. You didn't hear me, I said it shall not enter. Because you know who you are. Somebody say, I know who I am. Say it again, I know who I am. The order of Melchizedek is the eternal priesthood of God that, that brought Abraham into a living covenant with God by, the initiating him, by initiating him, the priesthood of God through the sacrament of the communion. This man 
very strange. Melchizedek, as he met Abraham, he brought out communion. Here is bread and wine. Bringing him into eating the body of Christ and drinking the blood. Listen, anyone who belittles the communion is not your brother. You know, in church, in order to bring God that we are taking it once a month. But really, there's nothing in the Bible that says once a month. Every time you are, conf you are confronted with issues, battles, challenges of life, you need to eat the body of the Lord and drink his blood so <laughs> that sickness will know you are, in, you are in the wrong body. I and Jesus, we are one. I am in communion with him. I have partaken of his flesh. I have partaken of his blood. Therefore, you cannot bring your danger into my body. From today, somebody is walking in victory. You are walking in testimony. I said you are walking in testimony. When Melchizedek, this high priest, this amazing man showed up, when he showed up, the Bible says, as Abraham blessed him, the man took the bread and the wine. And he gave Abraham and said, eat the bread and drink the wine. And something happened. Ah, we're getting there. He was breaking the power of everything the king of Sodom was about to bring. Every evil that Sodom, Babylon, and Egypt wants to impose on your life, on your family, on your business is cursed in the name of Jesus. They shall not be able to touch you. They will not be able to touch your family. I said they will not be able to touch you. They will not be able to touch your family. If you believe it, shout a good amen. And so here is, here is, here is, here is uh, Abraham. He's minding his business. He's at home. When suddenly somebody rushes down to call him and said, your nephew, uh, um, Lot, had been carried away by the people who invaded Sodom. Three kings invaded the whole area. It was like business. They were running a system of capturing everybody's goods and they carried what was in his house. And so Abraham takes 318 men who have been raised in the house. I'd like you to say in the house. Please, if God has planted you here, don't behave like a visitor. Be a man in the house carrying the sword and lining up behind the leadership of the house. That is when you can conquer. That is when you can take territories. That is when you can win. And so this man called Abraham, he didn't have a title, but he had a name. God will give you a name. God told him, I will make your name great. May God give you a name. He goes out and he fights the three kings that have gathered together and took the things of Sodom. He conquers them. And after he had conquered them, as he was about to move into his land, the king of Sodom heard that Abraham had conquered and he wanted to come and quickly influence Abraham with the spirit of Sodom, with the style of Sodom, with the behavior of Sodom, with the attitude of Sodom, with the curses of Sodom. Just then, Melchizedek stepped in. From today, Jesus will step in for you. He will step into your situation. He will step into your life. He will step into things that have to do with you. He will stop the hand of darkness. He will turn your life around. He will give you a testimony. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that your high priest will stand in for you. He will fight your battle. He will win your battle. Shut in the mouth of devils. If you believe it, say, I receive it. So remember again, Melchizedek is a high priest uh, forever. And so Jesus is now a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And because Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, it means that everything that Jesus does is like the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> what is an order? Let me explain what an order is to you. An order, it means that you are following the same system. i like you to say same system. An order means that you are following the same pattern. Somebody says the same pattern. In other words, the ministry of the church and the ministry of Jesus Christ is supposed to be after the order, after the same system. An order is a group of people belonging 
an, uh, to, an, uh, to an establishment, to the same principle, the same code of conduct, the same practice. They are an organization that follows the same system. And the objective of the Melchizedek order is to nurture your life. May you be nurtured. It is to establish you as a winner and a conqueror on earth, not a victim. That will be your testimony. It is to groom you here to fit in heaven. That will be your testimony. It is to train you here to be the best that you can be. That will be your testimony. The order of Melchizedek is to, is to mentor you, instruct you to operate as a king and a priest, as a king and a priest, not a beggar. There are so many churches and so many mountains in Nigeria now. A lot of the prayer on those mountains are begging prayers. They are not prayers of priests and kings. You listen to some places, you are wondering, do these people know who they are? Some people are behaving like beggars. They're begging, how did they phone I love me, oh Baba. My woman, you know, my commissile. Did they phone I love me, oh Baba. Can you imagine a king talk like that? How many kings are here this morning? If you are, put your hands together and give God the biggest praise. So even though there's a proliferation of Christianity in Nigeria, five churches on every street, a lot of it is immature. Baby Christianity. We are raising people who don't know that they are priests and kings. And a lot of the guys who call themselves prophets, some of them, when you hear the way they pray and the things they do, you know that they don't know who they are. Let me to ask your neighbor, do you know who you are? When you know who you are, you now operate in a new dimension. So an order is supposed to carry you to a new level. And from today, you are operating in that. And although you are a priest and a king, you are two entities but turned into one. Two entities turned into one. In those days, the Bible would make the king stand apart, the priest stand apart, but you are two entities turned into one. We are kings and priests at the same time. Jesus is the great high priest. Not the half priest, but the great one. He's also the king. Not just a king, but a king and a priest. Zechariah chapter 6 verse 13. There are several scriptures that refer to the fact that he is a king and a priest. It says, even he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. But he shall be a priest upon his throne. Can you see that? He's a priest and yet he's on the throne. And the counsel of peace shall be between them both. This day may the Lord reign in your life. May the priest show his anointing. And may the king show his anointing. You are a member of this household. You are a royal priesthood. It does not require membership fee. It does not require to be born into a natural family. You have to be called. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4. You've been called into this household. From today may the prayer of a king come out of your mouth. May the declaration of a king come out of your mouth. May the prayer of a priest come out of your mouth. May you operate on this level. May you operate in order. From this day, the reason we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, is that we are seated with him. He's the king of all kings. We are also occupying our throne. We are occupying our throne as priests. We are occupying our throne as kings. So from this day, I declare that the coming years, grace will rest on your life. Anointing will be fresh on you. Your purpose will be seen. Your power will be seen. The anointing will show. You will be a testimony. Shout amen with power. And so when Melchizedek showed up, when the king of Sodom was coming, look at me, Sodom represents everything bad. They represent perversion. They represent uncleanness. They represent LBGTQ. They are now adding more letters. They are representing man, marry man. They are representing all the Bobriskis of the world. That's the spirit of Sodom. It represents corruption. It represents destruction. That same spirit, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. The same spirit moved and entered into Egypt and then became multiplied in Egypt. The same spirit moved and entered Babylon. 
the Babylonian system. It was Sodom that entered Egypt, that entered Babylon. So the king of Sodom was coming to meet with Abraham, to, to, to put whatever he carries on Abraham. But just at that time, Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, who is also a priest, he stepped into the middle. From today, Jesus steps in for you. He steps in to turn your life around. He steps in to turn your life around. He steps in for favor. He steps in for blessing. He steps in for glory. He steps in for breakthrough. Shout amen. amen. And as he steps in, Abraham takes his tithe and puts it in the hand of Melchizedek. As he did that, putting it in the hand of Melchizedek, Sodom could not reach him because righteousness has taken over. Sodom could not reach him because righteousness has intercepted. The number one power of the seed of Abraham, the tithe of Abraham, is that it provoked divine interception. I'd like you to say divine interception. Oh, you need to get this message this afternoon. Many of us, we need divine interception. There's a lot of demonic going on in our land. I prophesy today, divine interception. Ah! When there is an attempt of the diabolical, the demonic, the satanic, to attack you and come against what the Lord has given you, may there be an interception. You didn't hear me say intervention. I'm saying to intercept. Ah! Melchizedek intercepted. To intercept means to halt. From today, God halts evil in your life. To intercept means to cut off. From today, dangers, destruction is cut off for your life. To intercept means to destroy. Weapons of darkness are destroyed for you. To intercept means to stop or interrupt a course every course that is coming against you known and unknown may the finger of the Lord stop it for you Amen. to intercept means a stop to transmission the transmission has been stopped it cannot be spread anymore from today receive divine interception receive divine interception when when, when Melchizedek stepped in and Sodom could not go forward what God stopped for Abraham was the spirit of a liberal society. Follow me to UK. Follow me to the US. We now have a liberal society where children of three and four are being taught that you being a boy, you may not be a boy. You may be a girl. If you want to change, just let us know. They'll carry you to hospital and begin to change a boy to girl, a girl to boy. They are asking men to write books. People have written several books and put in libraries. I saw the video of a Nigerian American who went to the council to, to the council hall to challenge the counselors. His name is John Amamchuku. He went there. His, his name is Amamchuku. I hope he knows the meaning. But he's very American. He said, I came to let you people know you have been sent by Satan. You are working for Satan. And you are writing books, you are destroying lives. Oh, today, every attempt of the enemy to, inter, to intercept your children, he is intercepted himself. So when Abraham put the tithe in the hand of Melchizedek, he stopped sexual perversion. Nowadays, almost everywhere on TikTok, you see boys with beard dressing as a woman, cross-dressers, even though there's a law in the land. Yet, you can see that Mr. Bob, whatever, is even saying, I have a big father who has allowed me to do what I am doing. And we do not know whom this big daddy is, whom this big father is, who is supporting what he's doing. Is a spirit of perversion. That's what Melchizedek stopped. It is stopped in your household. Your children will not be lost. Your grandchildren will not be lost. Please, I want a massive amen in your mouth. Because if you don't know that you are king and priests, the spirit I'm talking about is pervading the world today. Don't say I told you. It has entered some of the churches in the United States. Don't also say I told you. 
particularly some of the guys whom we hear them sing in America, and we are blown away. They sing and bless us in the morning, but a guy is chasing a guy. A lady is chasing a lady because somebody does not know that they need to do something for a divine interception. This morning, I stand on this altar without any reason for me to be afraid of contradiction. I'd like you to know you are a priest and a king. And therefore, as you stand in your office as a priest and a king, satanic programs are intercepted. Yeah. Hands of the enemy are intercepted. Yeah. Whatever you had planned for your family is intercepted. Yeah. Lies of hell are intercepted. Yeah. As you release your tithe, your offering, everything Babylon have, prompt, have prepared shall be canceled. When Melchizedek stood up and entered their midst, he, he stopped the disruption of families. Ah, there are some families they are disrupted. Your family will not be disrupted. Your sons will honor the Lord. Your wives will honor the Lord. Please shout amen with power. When I got born again, that was one of my vows. I was raised in a home that was ruthless. I have no mental memory of my family sitting together for breakfast and lunch and dinner. We didn't even have table. How much more say you are sitting around a dinner table? When you not get table, self. Now where, now where food meets you, you go chop up. And that is if the food day, self. So I made up my mind. I'm raising a champion family. I will not allow the king of Sodom to intercept my family. If God says to bring the tithe, I bring the tithe. I have no time to debate. I am bringing it. And this day, I'm raising a godly family. My wife loves the Lord. My sons love the Lord. My daughter-in-laws are A1. My grandchildren, oh my God, you should hear these little kids pray. You will know that these people have been taught the way of the Lord. And today on this altar, I pray for you. Your family will not be disrupted. Your life will not be disrupted. Shout amen three times. When Sodom was coming to him, he was coming with the corruption in the corridors of power. Midnight, some Nigerians know what is going on in their nation. They will hold their head and wonder. People are stealing the kind of money 10 generations cannot spend. It's not easy to spend a billion naira. Charlie, it's not easy to spend a billion naira. Then you can't steal 80. One man steals hotel. Come go pay the school fee of children where they never born. Ah, that's another level. We need kings and priests, and you will be the one. Oh, come and say better, amen. You see, kings are like lions. Lions roar. You will be a king. They will hear from you as you, <laughs> when Abraham, oh yeah, hey, when Abraham put that seed, in, in Melchizedek's hand. I don't know if Abraham knew what he was doing. Because what he was doing was stopping every evil. Every satanic move. Ah, don't tell me to stop what has worked for me. If you don't do it, then don't do it. But as for me and my house, I will give it and give it and give it and give it. And bring my tithe, bring double tithe, bring triple tithe, bring quadruple tithe. If you say, eh, it was taught to the sons of Aaron. This is not Aaron. And I am a priest after which order? You are a priest after which order? And when, when Abraham met the priest called Melchizedek, what did he bring? What should you bring? Magana Yakari. Every form of demonic manifestation from Sodom, everything where you they see today, you don't do from that time, oh. All these kind of spirits, you see men dressing like women, women dressing like men. Oh, you don't know. When you read your Bible and they say, some eunuchs were there to dress Esther. Yay. Those eunuchs walk like women, oh. They will clean out their genitals. It's been from a long time. So when Abraham met this priest who is still messing us up 
messing theologians up. Is it Jesus before the fullness of time? Is he not Jesus? Whoever he is, he has so power that even Father Abraham bowed. Ah! He intercepted Sodom and stopped the power of Sodom. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe you don't even know. Your country, Nigeria, is one of the few that is still fighting Britain, fighting Europe, and fighting America. The reason Barack Obama, one of the reasons he will not come to Nigeria is because we are one of the ones who voted against homosexuality. He's the chiefest promoter. So stop voting color. Start thinking priesthood and kingship. Every plan of Babylon, Egypt system, and Sodom against this house shall fail. Against your house shall fail. In the name of Jesus, they will fail. When he gave that seed into his hand, he stopped the spirit of Antichrist. Every program of Antichrist shall not manifest in your house. Babylon shall not manifest. Danger shall not manifest. Your family will not be disrupted. Your blessing will not stop. Your favor will not stop. Your growth will not stop. Your greatness will not stop. Shout amen with power. When Abraham put that, when Abraham put that thing in his hand, look at me. Malachi 3, chapter 10 is when I say, and bring all the tithe that there may be food in my house. So do this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Abraham was already rich. Genesis 13, verse 2. Genesis 13, 2. Abraham was already wealthy. So his tithe was not a tithe of, I need money. It was a tithe of, ah! I am before the king of all kings, the king and the priest. I, it's a tithe of honor. Some say tithe of honor. Say it again, tithe of honor. And this day I pray for you, Genesis 14, 20. As this man blessed Abraham, may you be blessed. May God lift you up. May your hand be lifted. Every time you come to the house of God, don't do it because you need a breakthrough in your tithing and you need more money. Just know that I bring my tithe out of honor. May the Lord be honored in your life. I said, may the Lord be honored in your life. In the name of Jesus, you will be honored. I said, honor will be on your life. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 says, honor the Lord with all your substance and with all that God gives you. Look at me. Honor the Lord with all your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. Look at me. Look at me. Naira will remain in trend. But honor goes up. When you bring money, money does not fly, grow wings. It stays here. But the attitude, honor is an attitude. Honor is an attitude. So when Abraham melt this king and priest, ah, he said, I must honor this man. Oh, this is my only chance. This is my first. And he did not know that by the action, he stopped in Sodom. From this day as you honor the Lord, you shall not know dishonor. I declare again, you shall not know dishonor. Say amen with power. Say amen with fire. In the name of Jesus, you will be blessed. Ah, divine interception will be your blessing. God will intercept darkness. He will intercept darkness. He will halt evil. He will halt destruction. He will halt the things that want to destroy you. Sexual perversion will not enter your house. Disruption will not enter your house. Corruption will not enter your house. Shout amen again. When he brought the tithe, he was entering the fulfillment of divine promises. Genesis 14, 19, 20. And there he blessed Abraham. As a priest and a king, he blessed a man who was not a priest and a king. For as great as Abraham was, he was not a priest and he was not a king. So a priest and a king blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God who has delivered your enemies into, his, into your hand. And he gave him title. From this day, may you walk in the promises of God. 
Melchizedek had the capacity to push Abraham to the next level. This convention shall be the convention of your next level. Oh, come and say amen with power. It shall be your convention of acceleration. The thing that were slow before will gain momentum. They will gain speed. They will move very fast. Hastily, quickly, without warning. Hastily, quickly, without warning. Hastily, quickly, without warning. Hastily, quickly, without warning. It's coming into your life. Coming into your hand. Shout amen with power. Look at me. Once Abraham put the thing in his hand, this man did the strangest thing. He moved away from king. He became a priest. He brought out communion bread and wine. The two, option, the two operations. He became, where's my image? They need to put my image for me. So you can see it's the same man, one with a crown, the other one without a crown. Ah, he became a priest again. And then he brought out communion. He brought out bread. He brought out wine and served this man communion. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham. I prophesy into your life today. Every time you come to the place of communion, may your body be renewed. May your faith be renewed. May your destiny be renewed. May your grace be renewed. Shout amen again. This man, the next thing I want you to see about this message is that Abraham was tithing from a blessed position, not a seeking position. Many people are beating the church. Oh, tight, tight, tight. We cannot stop spiritual principles because somebody does not like it. Because social media, little, little guys who are not born again do not like it. The truth is the truth. Someone say the truth. He came from a blessed position. Open your right hand. May your hand be blessed. May there be favor in your house. May there be increase in your life. May you be lifted at all times. Shout a powerful amen. amen. Glory to God. Remember the message again. Two priesthoods were standing. One is the priesthood of Aaron that shall come to an end. The other one is the priesthood of Melchizedek that shall be forever. And Jesus came. He lined up behind the priesthood of Melchizedek. After that order, I'd like you to say order. Say it one more time, order. And order means the same system, the same rule, the same principle, the same style. Nigeria runs its army after the order of the United Kingdom. Ghana runs its army after the order of the United Kingdom. Gambia runs its army after the order of the United Kingdom. Sierra Leone runs its army after the order of the United Kingdom soldier because we were all commonwealth. But next door to Sierra Leone is Liberia that was once connected to where? America. When you see a sergeant in Nigeria, three ropes facing up. When you see a sergeant in America, three rows facing down. That is disorder to us. That is their own system. We are lining up behind Britain. And so in the priesthood of Jesus, he's lining up behind who? And we are lining up there. So we are a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. We are the people who are not from the house of Levi. We are kings and priests. We are elevated people. Take it to another level. Your daughter is a king and a priest. Your son is a king and a priest. You are a king and a priest. You will not come down. You will not be lesser. You will achieve more. You will be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Shout amen with power. When he brought his tithe and put in the hand of Melchizedek, he released the power of resurrection. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8. When we do that, we are giving witness to resurrection power. What Buddha could not do, what Mohammed could not do, they could not resurrect. So Buddha does not receive tithe. Mohammed does not receive tithe. Only the living can receive from me. And I am glad I'm lining up behind the living. Your tithe will not be in vain. Your seed will not be in vain. Your giving will be out of honor. Shout amen with fire. And the Bible makes clear 
Look at me. This is very powerful. The tithe secures generational blessing. I like you to say generational blessing. Oh, say it for this roof to hear generational blessing. Nigerian church, we know how to teach generational curse, generational curse, 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 curse. How about generational blessing? In Genesis, in, in Hebrews 7, verse 9 and 10, even Levi, who receives tithe, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still living in the loins of his father when he met who? I need four men. Four young men, please, four young men. Four young men. I'm going to loan you money. You'll give me my money back. Oh. Okay, man. So who's going to be Abraham? Somebody will be Abraham. I see some gray hair on your head. So you'll be Abraham, you stand here. Uh, who will be Isaac? You should be Isaac. It's my, you look like Jacob small. So stand here. Yeah, this man is a pastor. We'll make him Levi. So you stand here. Help me to celebrate Pastor Kachi for me. So, the Bible is saying something crazy. That contrary to the opinion of medicine that says you don't exist until you are born, the Bible says you started in the mind of God. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. And so when this man was not yet born, when he was inside this man, when this man was not yet born, when he was inside this man, and when this man was not yet born, when he was inside this man, this man, hold the money, hold on, oh. me, I've chosen the best one, I'm Melchizedek. So, Father Abraham is going to meet me. I hope my money complete, oh. Father Abraham is about to give me more. As you are giving me, you are releasing four generational blessings. His son can never be poor. Isaac was laid back. He was not looking for wife at the age of 40. Daddy had to look for wife for him. In fact, when the girl come, come self to Maria, now in mama room, he could take the woman and go. He was too laid back. Yet, he was carrying something that was released by the action of his dad. Isaac became prosperous, Genesis 26, from verse 12 to 16. And the man became prosperous and he became blessed. He went forward and became great until he became very, very great. Why? Because when this man released the seed into Abraham, into Mal Melchizedek's hand, he released for generational blessing. So this one is blessed. This man, Jacob too, Ah, in the day of his storm, the day things were the toughest, was the day God appeared to him and said, where you are standing is a holy ground. You are coming back here to possess it because your great, great grandfather have done something awesome. And Jacob said, man, this is a holy ground. I'm bringing my tent here. I'm bringing one tenth of what God will give me here. And as for this man, even though he was receiving, he had already paid his tithe in this man. So, four generational blessing. From this day, your family will not know lack. Amen. Your children will not know poverty. Amen. As you ask, four generational blessings follow you. Amen. Shout amen powerfully. Amen. And look at me. If Isaac does what Abraham did, what does he release again? Four generational blessings. If Jacob did what his father, grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac did. What does, you, what does he tell? And if Levi does the same thing, what happens? May you be blessed and highly favored. So this man, what shall we do with you? I've collected my money. Go to my book stand and collect two books each. Thank you. Are you blessed this morning? I said, are you blessed this morning? The next thing we see about the tithing of Abraham was a surrendered heart. First of all, he was ready to give Sodom all the, anything that remained. But the tithe, the hallowed one. <laughs> I don't want to teach some error part, but when 
when the Bible says anybody who touches what belongs to God is an accursed thing, accursed is not cursed. Accursed is not cursed. Say with me, accursed is not cursed. Accursed means set apart. The Hebrew word there is cherem. It's like clearing your throat. Cherem. In Arabic, we say haram. I'm sure you've heard Muslims say, ah, haram Haram means you don't touch what is belonging to God. So when Abraham removed what was supposed to be removed, he was showing a surrendered heart. From this day, may you be blessed. May you be lifted. Let me say this to you. On that day when Abraham was doing it, it was the marketplace where many kingdoms operate and fight for business. As you go to the marketplace, the businessmen in this house, may the marketplace open up for you. May you prosper there. May you advance in your life. Advance in everything you touch. In the name of Jesus, shout a powerful amen. When I bring my tithe, it is, the, it is the engine for driving grace and faith. For driving grace and faith. As you bring it, may you experience grace and faith. May you experience blessing. When I bring my tithe, I am bringing sanctification on the remaining revenue. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord. God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread that belongs to you, so that you do not say, I have made Abraham rich. Again, open your right hand. The favor no man can give you will come from the Lord to you. Before the next convention, somebody in this house, mega breakthrough, a hundred times beyond where you have ever been, a thousand times beyond where you have ever been. A hundred times beyond where you have ever been. A thousand times beyond where you have ever been. It's coming to your house. It's coming to your life. As you operate as a king, you will operate with a, as a powerful king. You will operate as a priest. You will combine the offices. You will operate with power. You will operate with grace. You will operate with blessing. You will occupy your throne. I declare this morning into your life the supernatural will be lifted into your life it will be released into your life shout amen with fire he's the king and he's the priest I want to pray now he comes to the edge of the of the sea of Galilee and he uses Peter's boat as he steps into the boat the king in him took over he said throw your nets there and the moment he has spoken as a king, the fish is rushed there. From today, from today, from today, may the supernatural be released into your life. In this severe economic recession in Nigeria, you will no longer know lack. God will bring endless cash flow. Endless cash flow. There will be a manifestation as a son of God. God will teach you with great authority. Ah, every demonic activity of Sodom, every demonic activity of Babylon shall be exposed to you. They shall be exposed to you. They will not be able to touch you. The power that casts out devils will rest on your life. Supernatural grace will rest on your life. Creative thinking will be your portion. Business will be your portion. Supernatural authority will be your portion. Supernatural grace will be your portion. The power of multiplication will be your portion. The Bible says he was the king who had power over death. You will not die young. You will live long. Sickness will have no grip over your life. You will operate by the order of Melchizedek. You will operate as a king. You will operate as a priest. Generational blessing will be in your house. Curses will not be in your house. Supernatural grace will be in your house. Ayarosha, the God who made Melchizedek to intercept evil. Anything hell is preparing right now against you and your household, it is intercepted. 
it is intercepted it is stopped from this morning it is broken from this morning let things begin to change let turnarounds begin to come let favors begin to manifest let testimonies begin to follow you your life will follow order your ministry will follow order your blessing will rest your breakthrough will rest shout amen with power look at me i'm going to close now exodus 19 verse 6 even the children of israel who were living under the law god said to them you don't even know that you are called to be priests and kings but they didn't know so they talked anyhow he said and you shall be unto me a kingdom of what and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Kings and priests. Lift your hands up. Say, Father, before you I come today, I operate as a king. I reign as a king. I operate as a priest. I receive new unction, new power. I move in a new dimension. From this day, I'm lining up my life my ministry, my destiny, after the order of Melchizedek for my king and priest, Jesus himself is a king and a priest, and he has made me a royal priesthood. My money belongs to him. My life belongs to him. My giving belongs to him. I will not fail. Babylon is top for me. Egypt is top for me. Sodom is stopped for me. Everything that concerns me will excel. I will excel. I will excel. In the name of Jesus, things will work out for me. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. I'm seated in the heavenly places. I refuse to come down. In Jesus' name. I wrap up with the fact that the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6 revelation chapter 5 verse 10 revelation chapter 1 verse 6 says and hath made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever chapter 5 verse 10 says and has made unto us our god kings and what some say i'm a king and a priest i have no apologies for whom god said i am that's whom god says i am that's who i choose to be I will not pick pieces. I will not beg for bread. My children will not beg for bread. We will reign in life. We will operate. We will bind. It shall be bound. We will lose. It shall be loosed. In Jesus' name. Now put your hands together and give God the biggest praise. Now listen, remain standing. I want to do two, three things and hand over the microphone. All eyes closed, you are in this service. The same Pastor Matthew. Now I see the clarity. If Father Abraham can bring the tent to the man who is a king and priest, and I am a king and priest, and I am operating after the order of the man who received it. I have been failing in my tithing. I've been failing in my offering. I want you to pray for me the prayer of forgiveness. Just raise your right hand. All eyes closed. And I pray for you. You've missed out on some tithes. You've not brought your tithe. But you say from today, I'm changing my life. I'm receiving all that belongs to me. Raise your hand wherever you are. I'm going to pray with you. God's going to prosper you. Things are going to change from this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man and woman. So many hands that are saying, I used to tithe. I used to bring it. I used to give it. But I've not been bringing it. From today, I pray for you. May the blessing of the Lord rest on you. May the favor of God rest on you. May you be washed by the blood of the Lamb. May you be washed by the blood of cleansing, the blood of testimony, the blood of favor, the blood of turnaround. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a good amen. amen. Now everyone who is in the house, today you know your place. You are a king and a priest. And you are saying, Father, I want to walk under a new anointing. Under a new level of grace like I've never walked. Raise your hand if you are such a person. Lord, I pray for these men and women who are raising their hand today. Bring them into a new level. Bring them into a new dimension. Let these hands heal the sick. Let miracles follow these people. 
Let these hands heal their sick. Let miracles follow these people. So shall it be. You will be a reference point.